Welcome back to How Farms Work, everybody. Ryan here. We just came to the Bloomington Livestock Exchange. Here with Dad. We're going in to look at purchasing some bottle calves. We're not totally sure what the price is doing or anything. Uh, we're going to go in and check it out. We're looking to buy probably no more than 15 a day if we can get some. So, got my Arnold Palmer. Let's head on in. something off about him. Dude, where'd you come from? Well, we just left the sales barn and we left with four calves. Uh, all of them were 100 pounds, over 100 pounds. And the average price that dad paid for them was $81, which is honestly pretty good. Uh, the one of them is looking pretty sick, but he said he just wanted to take a, take a chance on him, I guess. He didn't pay all that much for him. So uh, for the four calves, their average weight was 103. Um, average price per head was 84.31, and the total weight was 415. So the total amount for the four cabs was 337.25. So we came to the Lancaster Vet Clinic to pick up some Baytril for the cabs. Uh, Baytril, Baytril is essentially an antibiotic, and what's, what that's going to do is fight against any bacterial infections that the calf may have whether it be in the lungs or anywhere. Um, typically when we buy calves from the sales barn, we always say that you know they're gonna have something. And one of them, um, when I went to load him in the trailer, I noticed that he was he had a bit of a runny nose. 
and uh, the other one I mean he was kind of weak so hopefully if we give him some bait trail it'll kind of reinvigorate him a little bit we got to run to light feed feed and pick up some milk replacer for him as well um, we're gonna be putting them in the barn uh, we got to bed, bed down the barn and everything yet but it's two o'clock in the afternoon so we got plenty of time so yeah uh, these calves FYI are not going to be veal um, I don't know how much I have to emphasize that no these calves are not veal we're not buying buy, buying them for veal um, veal isn't nearly as popular in the US as they like to try to claim it is um, usually when people say veal you think of Bob veal which is like baby calves like this um, that are typically only a few weeks old when they're slaughtered and I don't know I'm not really one to eat veal I'm, I don't really like the taste of it or the really the taste or the thought of even eating like a baby baby calf so I don't know um, I think typically in the US about a hundred thousand calves each year are killed for veal and um, they're for Bob veal I should say so I mean the they're not a huge population typically what happens with situations like this when the calves come off of dairies um, they will go to farmers like us who will raise them and then raise them up to feeder weight or up to full market weight and then they'll turn around and sell them for slaughter so um yeah we're just sitting here um waiting for dad to come back i didn't figure i'd go in um i figure i'd just watch the truck so Anyway, it's a nice day out. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't any rain in the forecast. I was kind of hoping there was because the corn could really eat it. It is kind of dry right now. Um, I was kind of hoping that getting we'd get a little bit of a rain, not like a torrential downpour. Um, just something to kind of get the ground saturated. But um, it was supposed to rain yesterday, and basically it all just kind of went around us. So we're going to head home and swing over to Light Freeds and get a, a bag of milk replacer. And then we're going to bed the barn down and get the calves all set and uh, ready to go to be fed. As he tries to lift me. At least you got some spunk. Don't you? Come here.
Richie, come on. Mm-hmm. Are you? Well, we got the calves all in the barn. Now, I really want to do like a side-by-side -side comparison uh, showing like Fritzy's collar from where the collar has been rubbing her fur and compare that to where the chains rub on the calves that we just bought today. And the funny thing is, is that the chains, at least in my experience that I've seen, the chains don't rub their, away their fur quite like the collar does. And people always think it's really inhumane, which I don't think that the chains themselves are inhumane. I think that if anything's inhumane of any sort, it's just the fact that we have them on a short leash. But they still have plenty of movement. They have plenty of area to put their bodies, you know, if they're un uncomfortable in one, one way, they can move their butt around and face the other direction. It's not like they're pinned right up against the stanchion. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things. I've gotten a lot of comments on it in the past. Uh, luckily, these calves, after they're off milk, will go out to pasture. So they should be pretty satisfied after that. So the milk replacer that we got for the calves contains neomycin and oxytetracycline. Now those two antibiotics, you have to have a VFD, which is a veterinary feed directive, uh, at least in the United States. They just started doing that in January of 2017. Uh, farmers were essentially overfeeding antibiotics to their cattle to try to make them grow faster. And um, it raised some concerns, especially with like salmonella and uh, antibiotic resistance where people were getting sick with that with salmonella and they weren't uh, it wasn't susceptible to any of the antibiotics they tried to treat it with so they kind of put those restrictions on animals so then it kind of reduces the amount of anti antibiotic resistance that is out there now um, with this milk replacer it's just like regular milk replacer you just feed it to them um, you have to have a vfd to, to have it if not they do have alternative stuff uh, what it takes to get a VFD is essentially just calling down the vet. The vet will acknowledge that you do have an issue. And especially with like bottle raising calves, uh, it is particularly stressful for the calf to go through the sales barn and uh, go through, go to on a trailer and um, being hauled to and from the sales barn. It's just overall very stressful with being pulled away from the mothers and then being put on milk replacer all within a very short span of time. Uh, it does increase your death loss. So farmers typically will try to do everything that they can to increase the survival rate of their cattle. And um, that's one of the things that we're doing as well as the bay trill, which is meant to be an, an antibiotic. And um, yeah, we have a VFD. Uh, we just renewed it for these bags of milk replacer. So uh, I think that, you know, I think two of them have something definitely wrong with them. One of them is just kind of lazy, I guess you could say. Um, he's, he, he went after the bottle, but he drank about half of it. And then um, the last one, or actually the first one that we fed and the first one that dad bought, it seems to be perfectly healthy. He drank a whole bottle and um, he's dressing down there pretty well. But once they get over the original sickness, um, their chances of survival go up, but it's always during that first week or two. Or it's particularly stressful for the calf and the farmer just because the farmer has to sit there and try to ensure that the calf does survive. So um, as we continue to go on, we might go to the sales barn even next week to pick up more calves. Um, it's just, we don't wanna to pay too much for the calves and with, it varies week to week for what they go for. So um, I'm kinda of hoping for some rain. Right now there's storms all around us. Um, the soybeans out here, dad and I were just going down the field road in the gator and we noticed that the heat stress is starting to uh, go over the soybeans and I noticed it a couple days ago, but it was just localized in one spot Now what happens with the soybeans when the when they start to get heat stress is because they need rain um, They use the water to kind of perspire and kind of handle all the, the heat stress from the sun So chlorophyll actually breaks down uh, because of the sun shining on it and that's what the plant uses to fuel its metabolic processes well when the plant doesn't have enough water, it can't produce enough uh, chlorophyll to keep its systems running. And it, 
what the soybeans will typically do actually is actually curl up and try to uh, decrease their exposure or their leaf exposure to the sun and that's not very good for yield so um, that's something that we're definitely watching we're kind of hoping for some rain because of that um, it's definitely noticeable even in the corn around the area travis was just in the next town over and he said that he caught one of the storms and he could hardly even see out the windshield <laughs> So um, very scattered storms, but um, we're kind of sitting here hoping that we can get some as well. So with that, uh, I'll let you all go. I think that's about it for this video. Uh, if I can think of anything else to add, I'll put it before this. But um, anyway, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And I'll see you next time.